Often with Excel, you want to color match your duplicates. For example, here, where you have certain duplicates, like the yellow and the yellow, the red or red, and you can do conditional formatting to highlight duplicates, but that will make them all the same like this, which doesn't really show you how to match them. I'm going to show you in this video how to do it so that, for example, if I copy this and paste it here, then they become a duplicate and that color becomes automatically matched. I'm going to show you how to do it with numbers and also how to do it with text, albeit with text, you do it in the cell next to it. So my name is David Benayman. I have tons of videos on my channel about Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using tech of the workplace, I'm covering on my channel. So if you love this kind of content, check out my other videos and maybe give this video a like as well. Well, first I'm going to show you with the text how to get to this level, which is where you can highlight all duplicate values. Go to conditional formatting, one of the most underused features in Excel, highlight cell rules, and then you get duplicate values. And then we're just going to press the defaults. Let's just make it yellow and duplicate is going to be yellow. And there we go. Um, but as I said, this one doesn't break down which one matches to which one. I mean, we can see manually that these two match, but it's kind of hard to see that if you have things that are very similar or if you have a long list, etc. So with numbers, we're going to do it. Here we can do it with conditional formatting. So the way to do it is first we're going to go to conditional formatting, color scales, and then choose any one. Usually this one, try and avoid the ones with white in them because that won't work for this method. So this one that has the most fluctuation is probably a good one. And next we're going to go to conditional formatting and highlight cell rules. And we're going to go to duplicate values, but instead of duplicate, we're going to press unique. And we're not going to have red. We're going to go to a custom format. There's going to be a white background. So don't choose no color, otherwise nothing happens, but choose white, press okay. And now we get to this scenario. And just to prove it, if I take this one, for example, and I copy that and paste it here, then they become duplicates and that happens like that. However, it's not great if you have slightly different results. So if I have, for example, this one and this becomes paste there, it does color match three. But let's say this is six and I get six, which is going to be there. These ones appear to be the same, so it's not going to be perfect, but it is pretty good for the most amount of results. But the next method I'm going to show you is going to also be able to distinguish between these six and sevens, as well as give you more elaborate examples that can work with text. So we need to get a formula to show us essentially a ranking system. So it's kind of like getting, you know, this one to say, for example, one, this one to say two, this one to 33, and then this one to also say three, but then this one to say four, five, and then the match over here with five, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the kind of thing that I want to get, which I'll be then able to use this format on these numbers. And because the low numbers that go between one and five um, in this context, it it wouldn't have this example of there being something very, very high that's just very close to it. So I'm going to need a formula to do that. And there is actually a formula that's not too complicated for that. You might think rank would work, but rank only works with numbers. It won't work with text. But you can actually get a similar thing to rank using a countifs function. So it might sound a bit counterintuitive, but let's say I have the word uh, player. And I have some other words over here. What you can do with countif is you can say, well, how many of them are after this letter? So if I go here, equals count ifs, I use the one with an S because the ones with an S is the only one I learned because you may as well learn it because it has more criteria. If you did it without an S, it would work in this example as well. I can say the criteria range could be this one, F4 to lock that in, and then comma, then my criteria is going to be um, greater than or equal to, and speech marks, and then and this one. Close my brackets, then it will tell me three. So three words are after this, being these three, because that's a P. But, for example, if this one changes from rank to something like brave, then that will be before, so it won't work. Now, when you're using countifs, usually you would refer to the exact cell, in which case you would just have P5, and there would be a countif of that. However, if you want to use other operators, like greater than, less than, or greater than or equal to, like this, then you need to do first speech marks, and then speech marks again, and then an ampersand to link it to a cell. We wouldn't need to do that if we had, for example, player just in this cell, then I don't need the extra ampersand and it still works. But because we're going to link it to a cell, we need to link it in this way. So now we're going to do the same concept to get this to work and essentially create this kind of ranking order where the first alphabetically is going to be one, the second one's going to be two, whereby any duplicates will duplicate that same number. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to insert some cells because we're going to start from scratch. And I'm going to write equals countifs with an S again, recommended and then criteria range there, press F4 to lock that in. Make sure you have the $4 signs. If you don't, then I'll show you how to fix it in a little bit, but it does take a little bit more. Comma, and then your criteria is going to be less than or equal to, and this one. So how many come before that alphabetically? Close your brackets, and the answer is eight. And if I drag it down, then this one is the first alphabetically, starts with a G. Um, and then it might skip some numbers. For example, three, there are two threes, so that will skip number two, but that's okay for the purposes of this. But what we're going to then do is, well, we're going to first go to conditional formatting, clear rules, clear rules from selected cells. We're going to add new rules. We're going to say the same as we did before. So first we're going to do 
Um, we're going to do it the other way around now, and I'll show you how to fix it anyway. So if you do duplicate values and unique are going to be in custom format and in white, like that, press OK. And then we're going to do color scales. Now it looks like it hasn't worked because it's kind of ignored the first rule. But if I go to manage rules, then over here, I have these extra options that I can say stop if true, or I can reprioritize them. So this one should be the first one, essentially. So if I move that one up, then press apply. Now it gets me to what I wanted to do. So I can press OK and lock it in. So last thing is, well, we don't need the text, so let's get rid of the text. And I'll show you how to fix the formula if you do a couple of nuances. So if you select this, and then you can go to the number tab or format numbers, click on custom, and then instead of general, we're going to write in three semicolons like that, because that is Excel's way of saying nothing, just a blank cell, which means that we only have the indicators, we don't have anything that's in there. So you can call this match, for example, and there it works. Now, if you do the criteria range, but you forgot to press F4, and this one, close your brackets, then if you drag it down, it's not quite going to work. As you can see, it's giving me kind of a bit nonsense results, so these two are matching, and that's because if I go to my formulas and show formulas, it's easiest to see. If I scroll down, I can see that my blue cell range is moving down, which means that more and more of them become blank, which is not really what I want in this context. So let me take that off. I'll show you how to fix it. You double click on the cell. You can click on here and press the F4 button on your keyboard. Note on certain laptops, you might need to press the function key with it. Whatever it is that gets these two dollar signs here. But then you have to do it again for the end range F4 like that. So if you do it whilst you're writing the formula, you only need to do F4 once and it will do the four dollar signs. But if you go back and amend it, you need to click on it and do for the start cell F4 and another F4 for the end cell. Press enter and then I can move my mouse so it's a black cross and double click if I want to. And this will drag it down and now you can see that it's worked pretty well. Let me just show you color scales and how useful these can be. So here I've got some numbers for the different months of the year and the different regions, but it can be very difficult to see just at a glance what's the biggest and what's the smallest one, therefore how important each of these are. But if you select a data, you can go to conditional formatting and color scales, then you can choose one. I actually usually try and use this one when I'm doing it just for numbers because this way it's less colors, so it's a bit less messy, and it's okay for colorblind people that can't distinguish reds and greens that well. And also, if you have an outlier, for example, let's say that this has an extra zero, then you can clearly see the outlier in both directions. Also, here's another trick. If you have a total row and a total column that you want to very quickly populate, rather than using a formula, you can just select all of them and press Alt and Equals, and that will give you all of these totals like this using the Auto Sum function. Alt Equals usually works one by one, so if you just select a cell, press that, it will work. But also, if you select the entire table, it will also give you these subtotals, which is really, really cool. As I said, these things that we are using in this example to color match duplicates works exceedingly well. And even when you have duplicates like this, so here I have over a thousand rows, but if I go to add some filters in the data tab and then filter, and then here I'm going to select to filter by color and choose this, I can see over a thousand rows just like that without having to do very much. And I can color code them and match them as I need to. So I love this trick. If this is something that you enjoy, then give me a like button on this video. And I have tons of videos on my channel about Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams, using tech of the workplace that I'm covering on my channel. So thanks for watching.